Hi hey everybody. I just want to give all of you a great big hug. I was telling my husband how much I want to have a great big outdoor gathering for all of my 4C kids, but it would probably just make me cry because I would be so happy to see you guys. Do any of you feel that way? My husband does not. He is totally fine not seeing other people or not getting hugs. So raise your hand if you're like Mr. Berkeley. I'm gonna do some triumph arms if you're like Miss Kelly. <laughs> no, I can, guys. I do love how God has made us so diverse that we have such a wide variety of people, right? Don't you? To officially introduce myself to those who haven't met me yet, I'm Miss Kelly, the Children's Ministry Coordinator at Forcey Bible Church. And if it's your first time joining us, go ahead and stand up and do a little pretend wave to say hi to everybody else. And then everybody else, go ahead and wave hi back and shout, welcome to 4 Kids Camp. Welcome to 4 Kids Camp. Awesome job. Awesome job. You guys are great. Thank you so much for humoring me. <laughs> Today, I've got Mr. AJ and Miss Trish helping me out. Mr. AJ is our pastoral intern and the director of 4C Day Camp. And didn't he do such a good job on his message yesterday? He is helping me lead 4C Kids Camp this summer, so he's got a lot going on. Miss Trish is one of our first grade teachers at 4C Christian School, and she is also an assistant director at 4C Day Camp, so she also has a lot going on this summer. They have put in so much time and energy to Kids Camp this summer, so let's give them a round of applause. Get it? A round of applause. Ah, oh, Miss Kelly's funny. Okay, no, seriously. Our theme for the summer is soul power. And who is soul power? Jesus, that's right. And so far, we have learned that soul power is greater than our abilities, greater than our enemies, and greater than our situations. Jesus can give our souls power no matter what we are up against. And this week, we are going to learn that soul power is greater than our trials. And I want to pause right here. Seriously. God is amazing. Say that with me. As little or as much enthusiasm as you're feeling, God is amazing. They can't put this curriculum together before the pandemic, before everything was closed. Did Mr. Dave know that the first week in August and probably a lot of weeks before this week, we were going to be going through trials? No, Mr. Dave did not know that. But you know who did? God did. That's right. God knew what was going to happen, and he was making preparations for us in advance. And I'm going to be real here, guys. Guys, this stinks. Right? This really stinks, doesn't it? I would use some bigger words here, but I know that we have some very young kids watching, so I want to use words that they're going to get too. So say it with me. You ready? This stinks. Okay, but now say this with me again. This stinks, but God is greater than this. We know that God doesn't change. If he was faithful in the Bible, he is faithful now. If he had a plan in the Bible, he has a plan now. Do we know what it is? No. No, we don't. So we can both say that this stinks and that soul power is greater than our trials. And I am not trying to be cavalier or flippant about this and just say, oh, God will work it out because there's a lot of stinkiness going on, right? I'm not just going to say that it's all going to be okay because God doesn't promise us that. What he does promise us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control throughout our trials. He does promise that his soul power is greater than whatever we're going through. It's greater than our trials. So this week we've got four heroes in the Bible, that's what we like to call them sometimes, that we're going to study. And today, Mr. AJ is going to talk about Job, which we find in the book of Job, right? <laughs> is that in the New Testament or the Old Testament? That is still in the Old Testament. A lot of our stories are coming from the Old Testament. 
And that means we find it in the first half of our Bible. Um, and what we want you to learn from Job is that we too can remain faithful like Job did. And that we should do our best to understand that God has a plan for us regardless of what is happening. The verse that we're going to practice today with Miss Trish is Isaiah 40, verse 28, which we're going to discuss later. And every Monday, we introduce you to the craft for the week that can be found on our main web page. And we give you that option so you can kind of mix it up throughout the week, whatever fits your schedule. Our craft this week is Daniel's Lion. And there's a video which explains how to make a lion face out of colored paper and scissors and glue, and you kind of make the papers curl. It's really neat looking. Before we begin, though, we're going to pray. Lord, we are having a tough time, and it is hard. So we pray that you would strengthen us and that you would give our souls power, and we would know that you are with us even in our trials. Amen. Okay, our camp song this week is one that I would love to be able to include on here, but we couldn't get the rights to it, so I can't put it on YouTube. It was our Team Kid theme song this past year, and it is just, just awesome, guys. I love it so much. It's called My God is So Big and So Strong and So Mighty, and you might recognize that, but this one's so cool. I'm throwing a new but not new song in the mix today, too. It's called Whose Side Are You Leaning On? To remind us to lean on God. And then we're also going to sing the Na Na song, which also reminds us that God is with us all the time. When I sit and when I rise, right? So go ahead and stand up and we're going to do some singing. One, two, one, two, three. Said whose side are you leaning on? Are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Well, I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. I said, Whose side are you skiing on? Skiing on the Lord's side. I said, Whose side are you skiing on? Skiing on the Lord's side. Well, I ski, I ski, I ski, I ski.
Do you got it? I don't know. This time I want you to holler out the promises while you move. Look like this. God is with me when I rise. So move yourself to the left and the right. He's with me when I'm up and down. So bounce and bump down to the ground. That's right. God is with me 24-7. Left step, right. Keep on stepping. He's with me through the high and low. Clap your hands. Down as you go. Now raise your arms and say. Wherever you go. You were never alone. God is with you all the time. Welcome back to 4C Kids Camp. Glad that you all are with us today. It's been a fun couple of weeks. We've been through five weeks together, guys. I'm so glad that we've been able to do this together. And we're at our last two weeks. Uh, through the seven weeks that we've been together, we've been talking about soul power. And we've talked about how it's greater than our circumstances, greater than our enemies, greater than you know anything that we might face. And this week, we're going to talk about how uh, soul power is greater than our trials. Now, we're going to go through things in life that are hard. Uh, we talked about with Joseph last week how he had a difficult circumstance, difficult life. But sometimes God's going to allow things into our life that are, that are going to just be difficult. And it's not always going to be because we've done something wrong. Uh, God just allows things to happen to us, to grow us, to make us more like him. And this week, we're just going to look at four different people uh, who have been tested by God and that came out on the other side, who used soul power to uh, trust in God and to be more like him this week. So as we get into the story this week, let's remember that we have soul power in us when we have faith in God, that when we trust Jesus, that we have soul power in us, that when we have soul power in us, we can be stronger than our enemies, we can be stronger than our circumstances in life, and it's stronger than our trials, our difficult times. So today we're going to talk about my friend Job. He's in the Bible. He's in the Old Testament. And Job was a really wealthy man. And Job was known for a few things. One, he had a lot of money. He had a lot of land. God had blessed him with all this. But most importantly, uh, he was known as someone who loved God. And Job loved God. He obeyed God with all that he did. And he worshiped God all the time. Uh, he's someone who followed God and, and obeyed his commands. And in the beginning of Job, it talks about how much money he had, how he had all these livestock. He had cattle, he had grain, he had farmland, he had a big family, he had lots of sons and daughters, he had a wife. And then one day, uh, Satan goes to God and says, um, let me tempt Job. Let me, let me do things to Job and he will curse you. And God says, no, I know Job. Job is a good man. He loves me. And I know that if you tempt him, if you do these things to him, if you give him these trials, that he will still praise me. Well, we look in the Bible in chapter 1. Uh, we see that in verse uh, 13 uh, that it says that Satan first took away his property and his children. It says, now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking. And there came a messenger to Job saying, the oxen that were plowing the fields... And the donkeys that were feeding um, had been struck down, and they were killed. And all their servants that were there were killed too. Uh, and only this person was able to escape and tell him. So Job lost all of his animals. He lost his servants, people that were working for him. And while he was yet speaking, there came another that said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep, and all his sheep were gone now. And before he was he was finished speaking, uh, the Chaldeans, who were a people group, formed three groups and made raids on the camels and took and struck them down. So he lost his cattle, he lost his donkeys, he lost his sheep, he lost his camel. And before he could stop speaking, he said, your sons and daughters, they were eating and drinking while they were at their brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And the house fell down and all your sons and daughters died in it. 
So Job was obviously so sad. I mean, can you imagine what it's like to lose all of what you own and then lose your children? Uh, Job went through a great trial, uh, but it didn't stop there. Uh, then Satan starts attacking Job, and he gives him these boils all over his skin. So Job loses all of his wealth. He loses all of his income. He lost all of his farm. He lost his kids. And then Job starts to get boils on him. He, he starts to get sick. And it's kind of at this point where Job's wife says, why don't you just tell God that he's not doing something right? Like, Job, why don't you just say, God, forget you. I'm done. I'm done following him. I'm done listening to you. Obviously, you don't love me if you're doing all this to me. But Job doesn't do that. He praises God. And he struggles with God at first. He says, God, why, do you, why are you letting, me, letting these things happen to me? God, if you really love me, why are you letting these things happen? Uh, but we know that God loves us, right? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And we know that God loves us. And Job shows his faith. And because Job shows his faith, God is merciful on him. He lets him live. He doesn't, kill, he doesn't let him die. Um, and eventually, and not because he had faith in God, but and, and not because he withstood the trial but God ends up blessing Job even more and this isn't because Job did the right thing but just because God loves him you know whether or not Job had listened to God I, I think that this still would have happened uh, but we can't ignore that God does want us to obey him and we see that Job had faith in God and that's why he obeys uh, so what we what do we learn about God from this is that God knew that Job could handle the test the Bible does say that God is going to give us a lot. In Corinthians, it says that he is going to test us. But he says he'll never give us more than we can handle if we trust God. So if we trust in God, that he'll never give us more than God can handle is really what it is. So if you try to do it on your own apart from God, then yeah, it will be too much for you to handle. But if we trust in God, then we can take, we can take whatever trial he's going to give us. And he allowed Satan to test Job. Uh, and the reason Job could do this was because he had God on his side. And just like we have the Holy Spirit in us, we can take these tests. So if we remain faithful like Job did, then we can do our best to withstand the trials. That if we trust in God, then our soul power is greater than whatever trial that we, we may face. Like if someone's being mean to us in school, or if we're having a tough time obeying our parents, or if we're having a tough time just listening and talking to God. If we trust God, then we can make it through that. So we should do our best to understand that God has a plan for us. And think about Joseph. What, what He said that what, he, what his brothers meant for evil, God meant for good. And that's true for us too. That with the trials that Satan really inflicted on, it's because of Satan that those were inflicted on him. God allowed it, but Satan did it. That what Satan meant for evil, God means for good. So if, if we trust God, then we know good things will happen. So a couple discussion questions to talk amongst yourself with, with your parents right now is, um, we, you know, who tested Job? Who was the one that tested Job? He went to God and said, we should test Job. Who was that? Uh, second is, why did God allow these things to happen to Job? Why do you think God allowed these things to happen? Think about that. Why did God allow these bad things to happen to Job? And last, how did Job respond? How did Job respond to the test ultimately? What was his final response? So talk with your parents about that. Parents, spend some time with your kids to go through that. And then we'll move on to our memory verse now. Okay, so before we practice our memory verse with Miss Trish, I wanted to talk about it with you because I just love these verses. And I wanted to give you some background on this one that we're doing. We are practicing verse 28 of Isaiah chapter 40, but we already know verses 30 and 31. We practiced those at VBS. So I want to connect the two that we know. Isaiah chapter 39 tells us that all of Israel is going to be taken by Babylon, which comes true about a hundred years after Isaiah um, told them this prophecy. So Isaiah tells the king and all of Israel that this terrible thing is coming. And so chapter 40 is God following that up 
with comfort in the prophecy of Jesus the Messiah, who will one day come. But he doesn't come 101 years later. He comes many years later after that. So his goal for all of this, he tells them, his goal is for his glory to be revealed to everyone. For everyone. His, he says his word will stand forever. It will not change. And that Jesus is going to be this powerful warrior Messiah who is also this good shepherd and takes care of his sheep. He's strong and at the same time gentle. And he goes on to describe God that God is amazing and wonderful and powerful and all-knowing. He's the creator, etc., etc., etc. It's a great chapter. He is here and we are here, right? What a mighty God we serve. And yet he loves us enough to give us comfort in our trials. He gives us his strength in times of trouble. And I'm going to read you the verses now so you can hear all of them together. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives his strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Wow. Wow, I want that power. I want that strength. Have any of you felt weary recently? I have. I have often. I would love to not feel weary, right? So if we, we will soar on wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not be faint. If we put our trust in God and let his soul power shine in our lives. Let's go ahead and practice this verse with Miss Trish. Hello, hello boys and girls. It's Miss Trish and I'm here today to help you with our memory verse. Our verse today is Isaiah 40, 28. And here's what it says. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. Isaiah 40, 28. Let's go through this verse and think of some fun motions to help us out. When we say, do you not know? We're gonna go, it's a question, no. Have you not heard? For Lord, we're gonna make an L and put a sash around ourselves. The Lord is the everlasting, twirl in a circle and push it forward. The everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. Now the word fathom is just like the word imagine and we're going to take our little pinky finger and think of an idea while we imagine, okay? Let's try this again, ready? Isaiah 40, 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Isaiah 40, 28. This time I'm going to show you the words. You do the motions. Ready? Isaiah 40, 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Isaiah 40, 28. We're going to do it one more time together. I'm going to whisper the words, you say them nice, loud, and clear, and we'll do the motions together. Ready? Isaiah 40, 28. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. 
Isaiah 40, 28. It's your turn. Do your best. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us at 4C Kids Camp again today. Be sure to put any pictures or videos that you guys do on our Facebook page. I would love to see some of your lions if you make one. And don't forget that we should trust God even in the midst of our trials. And we will see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye, guys.